Welcome back to the channel Super Academico and Blue Eye Patch. Let us keep the reading of my book Cluter's Mare Pop Beyond the Cloud. Available now on Amazon, click the link in the description to make your order. Today we will begin the reading of the Chapter 3. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Let's go. Chapter 3 We are all divergent to some point. The next week was kind of embarrassing. As winter advanced in our city, the days became greasier and rainier. Instead of going to school on foot, as usual, usually meeting Marcos and other classmates in the midway, my father would take me. The care with us, children, increased in this season of rains and a little more cold. Common victims of allergies and colds, we have to deal with the coats and medicines in excess. After all, our parents are parents. When I got out of my father's car, I could see Marcos walking about 300 meters away. The walkway was different from the car, so we did not go through it. My father did not care if I had a boyfriend, after all I was 14 years old and he was very sensible, but I think Marcos's constant presence in our house in recent months was enough for my father. Better not turn a ride on the way to school. Besides, since the incident on the math test we were not meeting so often outside of school. At that time I did not notice but I should have realized he was hiding something from me. I waved at him as he approached. He saw me and waved back. He was approaching. His pale and handsome face was a little sad, but still he smiled at me. When he arrived, we kissed and walked through the school gate. Some friends greeted us on the way. He then said, I saw your review of the Hunger Games. <laughs> what did you think? Uh, your text is very good as always, but I don't know if I agree with your approach of comparing Katniss and Peta as being young revolutionaries facing an oppressive state with our current situation. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, we are not prisoners who are forced to do something. We are dedicated to studying to have a good placement in the future because we want the best. A Marcos, it was an analogy. A metaphor. All movies can be interpreted as metaphors of something in reality. I know that. But the way you wrote it seems that we study and work because we are slaves. Nor does it look like your previous text that focused on the characters' relationships, the feelings, as in the two Twilight movies, seem revolutionary. Uh, no. Bellicose. We arrived at our classroom and put our backpacks while we continued to talk. Bellicose. What a different word. Comes from military military. I know. I have a good vocabulary. He felt the irony of my sentence. I do not think any kid likes to be confronted when it comes to intelligence. Especially from a younger girl a little than him. Are you sure it was you who wrote it? I looked at him with utter reproach. It was like indirectly calling me dumb because there would be the assumption why I write a blog for young people and adolescents would not be able to produce something deeper speaking of an oppressive state and a revolution. A your question even offends me, Marcos. I sat in my chair, turning my face against him. It wasn't my intention, Mare. It's that it escaped much from your pattern of texts and also of thematic. Who knows its access can even get to drop after that. So you make a mistake. The views are up almost 30%, and have more comments than I could handle the day before yesterday. Marcos thought for a moment. I was not looking at him, but I noticed his silence and I turned to see him again with that distant look. He looked the same blank as when we were at the movies. I got up, looked directly at him and he seemed to be looking through me. I picked up my cell phone and started filming the way he was. I put my hand in front of his eyes and nothing. I stopped filming and touched his arm. His eyes came back to me again. Did you come back from where you were? Oh, what do you mean? You were absent again. Same as in the movies. How is it? It is true. But you were saying. That was seconds ago. You're kidding me. No, I don't. Look. I showed my recording to him. He watched with a questioning expression. It was obvious he could not remember anything. Oh, Marcos, I'm getting worried about this. Come on, Mare. It's no big deal. You should talk to your parents about it. By the way, how come I still don't know your parents? He looked a bit embarrassed. He handed my cell phone back and disengaged. I do not think it's time yet. Uh, you've been to my house several times. My parents know you. We studied together and went out together. When will be the time? At the engagement? Uh, what is it, girl? Are you messing things up? Uh, no, Marcos, I was being ironic. 
That attitude is at the very least strange. I told you. They travel a lot and are almost never home. A very convenient. I was annoyed at him now. The teacher came to the room to begin the biology class. This is not over, Marcos. Something strange is happening to you. Yeah, yeah. His ironic tone irritated me even more. We'll talk later, okay? The class started. Note. I think I remember this conversation in a different way than it really was, because I think my way of speaking at the time was not as sure as it is now. But one thing I can guarantee, my concern for Marcos was legitimate. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Bye.